we are ambassadors of Christ. When I think about an ambassador, you know, they, they're appointed, let's say the United States appoints an, an ambassador, let's say to France. There's a, an embassy there in Paris, right there in the 8th arrondissement, the 8th district. And it's just a couple of houses or a, couple, a few houses down from the palace of the French president. But if you think about an embassy, an embassy legally, so the one in Paris or anywhere in the world, that is American soil. Even though it's in France, it's like it's American soil. So I wanna let you know that we represent, thank God for America. I love America. I was on, the, on, on what's up last night, what's up last night, talking to somebody from France and she's visiting uh, North Carolina with some friends of ours. We, we introduced them long distance and she's uh, actually going to their church today. And she said she had been a, couple, a few times to America. And I said, you know, I, I, sh I shared with her, well, you on, you're on God's soil in America. You're on the land of God. And that when we established our nation, it was one nation under God. And then I said, you're in the land of the free and the home of the brave. She said, I'm gonna have to go write this down. I said, so that means you're free and that you have moral courage to be brave for the, for the kingdom of God. So when I'm sharing this with her, she writes it back in her language. I'm in the land of freedom and the Braves. I said, I think the Braves is a ball team. I said, we are the brave. And I wanna thank God that that embassy, everywhere you go, wherever there's an American embassy, is soil of the United States but I represent a kingdom, we represent a kingdom, and that kingdom, wherever we walk, heaven on earth is there. That's why God, Jesus said, when you go out, tell everybody the kingdom of God has now come near you. Why? Because not only do we represent the kingdom of God, but every place our foot does tread, God's given it to us. So I declare everywhere I go, this is the embassy of God, I'm an embassy of God. I'm an ambassador of Christ. And everywhere I go, the kingdom of God comes with me. That's right. The kingdom soil comes with me. And the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I've told many people over the years, I've got the best job in the world. I spread the joy of God everywhere I go. It's the good news. And when I think of joy in American, J-O-Y, Jesus over you. I spread the Jesus over you wherever I go. This is what we're called to do as believers, that we are ambassadors of Christ. I want to read the scripture, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. And this is the uh, scripture in New King James Version. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, he's pleading his case through us. Come out of darkness. Come out of darkness into the light. It reminds me of when we were preaching, Deborah, we, in, in Ukraine. Pastor Vadim Shipilov calls us one day back in 2014. And he said, Pastor Jules. He got me on the phone. Pastor Jules, where are you? I said, I'm in Paris with my wife. Will you come? Will you come preach to us? He said, the Russians have invaded. That's when the war started. Most people think it started later. It started in 2014. It had pushed into his city. They pushed them back. And the, the trenches were 60 miles outside of the city. Will you come and preach? Everybody I called, they're afraid. Will you come? I said, when you want us to come? Now. Can you come now? I said, we'll get an airplane ticket to Kiev, and we'll be there. He said, I'll have somebody pick you up. And we began to preach the gospel there. Oh, my God. And I remember him telling me, we, first of all, we preached to the, to the leadership. We preached to his church, then to a group of leaders, the leadership, two or 300 people, probably maybe more. And then he rented a movie theater for outreach. I'd always told God, I'd say, God, I'd like to preach at a movie theater. Well, here it was. You know, you gotta watch your lips. Everything that comes out your mouth, if it's godly, God will make it come to pass. So he says, now listen, Pastor Jews, he says at the end, so they understand, he said, I'm, tell, I'm, I'm asking you when you get to the point of doing the altar call, you call me up and I have a video to explain to them how to be saved. 
I said, okay, okay, just call me up. Well, you know, I, I start, I start preaching and I got an interpreter, a really good interpreter, not, uh, Natasha was, 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 uh, my, our interpreter. And the place was packed. I mean, it was a big movie theater. It was packed, hundreds and hundreds of people. And I forget about the, the film. So at the end, I, I, I finish my message. I say, come to Christ. Come to Jesus. Come. And they started coming. They lined the aisles. They, fit, they packed the altar area. And they were just standing in the lines. And, and all of a sudden, I looked at Pastor Vadim and said, oh. I said, come up here. He comes up and said, I forgot about, you want to put the film? He said, no, you've already done it. Look at all the people that are getting saved. And this is what this says, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you in Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. You don't have to have a fancy film. You don't have to have fancy words. You don't have to have a long sermon. You can just tell people, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. And suddenly the darkness breaks because the light comes through. We're ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. And everywhere we go, we bring the kingdom with us, bringing the light of God. Point one today I want to share is many people operate below their faith level and potential. Many people. They, they, we have a potential. When God created you, he created potential. And you have potential to do great things. Jesus said it this way, you will do greater things than I did. Wait, I can't imagine. Yeah. Well, start imagining. And I began to sh uh, learn, and we've been coming, walking with Christ solidly. And when I gave my life totally to God, 1979, I was talking to somebody today from the East Homer side, from East Homer. And I said, you know where East Homer? Yeah, I know where East Homer is. And, and she said, uh, and I started saying, yeah, my, my relatives helped build the fire department there, the fire built, the fire truck and all, and uh, the community center, the recreation center. And actually, in those days, in the early days, you know, I was a young boy, they didn't have, on the east side of home, I'm talking West East Park, from the, from the intercoastal, that side, no concrete roads. Everything was shells. They would come with oil and oil the shells like once a month. At, at that time, you, you know, I, I went barefoot a lot and I had oily feet for a while. And so my uncle started saying, wait a minute, we're going to start running for office. And they started running for office, getting elected and brought cement, concrete, street, concrete streets, can you imagine? And actually, uh, it was such a blessing to understand that they had all this potential had been there the whole time. The whole time, the potential was there. But somebody had to put a demand on it. And you see, I'm not the one to put a demand on your faith level or your faith potential. You are. When I came to Christ, I realized I was the one that was responsible for my own faith potential God had given me and to make that activated and become the fulfillment of that potential. I, I, I don't want to operate below my faith level. I want to operate at the top. John Osteen used to say, start operating at the top of your barrel. Don't be dragging at the bottom. Fill your barrel up and operate at the, out of the top. And so Deborah and I have a calling. And, and you know, we always say we're on a mission from God. We're on a mission from God. We pray every night together. She says the first half, I say the second half. We pray out loud together. And one of the things she says is that, you know, God, here we are. We want, we, we want you to activate in our lives what you want for our lives. First of all, as, a, as a, an individual, uh, I want to activate the full potential of my faith and love as an individual. And we call our names up, Jules and Deborah. She'll say Jules and Deborah. And as a married couple. So, and, and she always says, you know, because we're legendary. We're a legendary couple. But when she says the individual and the legendary couple, she says, out loud, we're on a mission from God. When I began to realize God had me on a mission, well then, you know, we'll talk about this. Our calling, point two, Deborah and I's calling, is to help people raise their faith levels. That's what we do. That's what we, everywhere we go, all over the world, our calling is to raise, help people raise their faith levels and to meet their faith potential by connecting people to Jesus Christ through faith. You see, if you get connected to God, you're, listen, God will reveal to you who he is and who you are. 
And whatever, whatever you have in you that is lacking, I say it this way, every, every Friday I have this place packed with children from first grade through 12th grade. And I said, God, I, and I say, listen, if there's something in you that's corrupt, sinful, unholy, not right, ask God to pull the weeds. God, pull the weeds and plant the good seed. Pull the weeds. Could be anger. I had somebody tell me the other day when they came to Christ, the first thing he asked for is, can you get this anger out of me? God, get out, get me the anger out of me. Wow. Listen, if you come to Christ and get connected, he's going to visit you at your house. That's right. He'll come to your house. Now, thank God you can come to the house of God. But I'm telling you, I, did, I had stopped going to the house of God many years ago, and I always say this. I stopped going to God's house, so Jesus came to my house. Now, some people say, well, if you know, you, you don't go to church, you're not, you're not a Christian, God don't, doesn't hear you. No, that's not true. He hears the cries of even the sinner. That's right. And here I was, I was living a good life. I was a lawyer, had a lot of money, big house, everything. I mean, I was really doing good. But you know, there was something lacking in me. I was not a Christian. I didn't know Jesus the way I needed to know him. So he came to my house one night, completely revolutionized my life. Changed everything, all of a sudden my eyes opened. And I told Deborah that night when she came home, I said, Deborah, our whole life, I didn't say my whole life, our whole lives are changed. Our whole lives are changed. I got saved tonight, that's nice, honey. She didn't believe what I was saying because I'd been a non-Christian for so long, an unbeliever for so long. She said, well, that's nice, honey. And the next day she served me Uncle Ben's converted rice. <laughs> I said, thank you, thank you. I'll take this as a covenant meal. I'm being converted, oh, praise the Lord. And so our mission, our calling is to help people raise their faith levels. So I'm gonna say it this way, our calling is to help you raise your faith levels now we're not very religious i just have to be honest with you i see churches all over the world and a lot of times churches are full of people that are that, that they just go to church they act one way at church and then another way at home why they're not meeting their faith potential are you against them no i'm there to encourage them lift them come to christ get saved what well, i'm saying well then be fulfilled in your salvation our calling, our mission is to help people raise their faith levels, meet their faith potential by connecting people to Jesus Christ through faith. Point three, God has a plan for your life. A lot of people say, I hope I live long enough to find out the plan that God has for me. I've been, I've been wanting to know the plan of God for the last 40 years, but you know, I've heard people say that. I hope before I die, well, I'm, gonna tell you, I'm, I'm gonna tell you the plan right now so you don't have to wish or think. God has a plan for your life. You have a purpose for being here on earth. Your mission from God, I used to watch Mission Impossible and lived it. Your mission from God, if you decide to accept it, is to be like Jesus. That's the plan. That's the purpose because if you become like Jesus, everything rises in your life and everything you'll do is your eyes will be open and you will, you will have so many divine appointments. God will be saying this, God will be saying that. I remember when I first got saved, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, Jesse and Kathy, used to witness to us all the time. And I remember one particular evening, they would come over to our house all the time. We barbecued, and Deborah would make some of the best gumbo in the whole wide world. And, oh, we had so many, and, and we'd play Pedro. Pedro was a little Cajun card game. And we'd play, and we'd do different things, and just have a lot of good times. And one night, and always, because God begins to draw you, even if you're saved, God is trying to draw you to your fulfillment of the potential of who you are in Christ. He's trying to draw you in. And many times we look to the pastor or the preacher or the big ministry or whatever and say, well, you know, they're living it. Oh, yeah, I went in. I got soaked real good. Uh, I need another soaking. Well, what I want to do is go release you to go build your own swimming pool and dive in any time so that you can swim in the presence of God. And you, but I remember one night as they were leaving, I was always asking them, and they would talk about miracles. In my mind, I said, I don't know how that happened, but I know there's no God, but I, I, I don't know how that happened. So one night they said this as they were leaving. You're going to get saved. That's what he said. You are going to get saved. 
because we're praying for you and you're our family and we have the promise of our family. And they were leaving out the door and I remember them standing at the door and I said, read my lips. You know, President Bush had said, read my lips. One time long ago, the first President Bush, he said, you know, no taxes, read my lips, no new taxes, and he taxed us. I said, read my lips. I will never be saved. That's what I told them. And they looked, they said, read our lips. On their way out, read our lips. You will be saved whether you like it or not, but you're gonna like it. I'm here to tell you, I like being saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Your mission from God, if you decide to accept it, is to be like Jesus. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity, I preach this all over the world. Christianity is not a religion. The world tries to make it a religion. The church tries to make it a religion. It's not a religion. Christianity, just real simple, is being like Christ. It's Christ-likeness. So you can have a whole denomination called Christianity, but if nobody in the church is like Jesus, it's not Christianity. It may they say it is, it's just something else. It's just something else. But when you have somebody becoming like Christ, you're Christ, you're like Jesus? Yeah, I mean, it starts to show. Because everywhere you go, Jesus is with you, he's in you, the spirit of God's in you. That's Christianity. And so your mission from God, if you decide to accept it, is to become like Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Point four. You are an open portal of heaven's touch on earth. You say, well, you know, God have, has portals, and he has places that are portals, that you can go there and something's happening. I mean, it's the presence of God. There's an opening from heaven to earth, and God's spirit's just poured out. Well, guess what? It's God's idea that each and every Christ-like believer would be an open portal of heaven. He said, I want you to go out and preach the gospel to the poor. I want you to lay hands on the sick. They're going to recover. I want miracles flowing through your life. Well, how that's cast out demons. If the devil gets in your way, get him out of the way and just move forward and say, the kingdom of God has now come and I'm establishing the kingdom of God. This place now belongs to Jesus. When we were at the uh, Olympics, we went to the opening ceremony on the river in Paris. And there was all of you know, the boats passing with all of the athletes and all. And we found out later that they had this, um, I guess you could say, unholy, I call it the lost supper. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It was, I call it the lust supper. And so that was on a bridge, not far from where we were, right before the Eiffel Tower. And on that bridge, they performed what they denied later as the lost supper. They were kind of saying, we're, we want everybody to come and be diverse and participate in our feast of lust. Well, listen, it's a mockery because it's what Jesus did. He said, yeah, all who hunger and thirst, you can come. It doesn't matter what condition you're in. It doesn't matter whether you're a sinner. It doesn't matter what kind of person you are. You come. But when you come, you repent of your sin and it becomes the Lord's Supper. So what we did afterwards, uh, there were some people that we were connected with and they came and said, Pastor Jules, can you come? And we went and I guess there was 20 or 30 of us there. And long story short, we, uh, we dedicated and anointed the bridge for the kingdom of heaven. And then afterwards, I went out, we went out with a couple of people. We came back and God said, now have the Lord's Supper here. So we got some bread and got some grape juice and we actually went in public, there were four of us, and at four or five, we, we had communion. And then somebody else called, are, are y'all still there? Yeah, we're sending some more people. So then there, now there's maybe a dozen of us, and uh, 13 of us actually, because Jesus at the, last, at the last supper, there were 13, Jesus and 12 disciples. So the 13 of us, we had it again. And I'm prophesying to you, that that bridge will be called the Lord's Supper Bridge and people by the millions will begin to have the Lord's Supper. How can I say that? Because I believe it. And we've claimed that bridge for the kingdom of heaven. It's right next to the Eiffel Tower where seven million people a year go to that Eiffel Tower. And it's just a sharp walk to the bridge. So you see, you're an open portal of heaven on earth. God will give you ideas and you start declaring and you start decreeing and you start proclaiming. 
And so what we say is the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And so as we begin to live our faith, and this is what we do, we live out our faith. We say, well, how do you do it? Get close to God. Well, how do, how do I do that? Get close to God. Find a place to pray and be quiet before him and say, God, here I am. Whatever that is in me that's not like Jesus, I ask you to pull that out of me. Whatever it is, some things I don't even know. And if you'll be quiet enough to hear and listen. My sheep know my voice. The voice of a stranger, they will not follow. If you be quiet enough to listen, he will even point out things in you that you may be blind to and said, that doesn't look like me. Oh, I repent of that, Lord. Take that out of me. Now, because of your habit of acting that way or being that way or thinking that way or doing that way, you might go back and do it again. <laughs> I guess I messed up. I guess I'm not going to be. No, go back. Lord, pull that thing out by the roots. I curse the roots. I don't care if you have to do it a hundred times. Go back. Get in his presence. And one day, I, I've had so many times happen to me, you'll sense the presence of Jesus himself show up and touch you. You might see him. You might not. You might just sense his presence. I don't know how he's going to show up in your life. I've seen him with my physical eyes. I've sensed his presence. Suddenly I knew he was there. I've seen fire coming out of me. I mean, I've had so many things happen in my life that I can't write, a, write it down and say, hey, when this happens to you, then you'll know it's Jesus. No, when Jesus happens to you, whatever he shows up to do, sometimes he needed to open some blind eyes, sometimes deaf ears, sometimes lame feet. Sometimes dead people raised again from the dead. Whatever he has to do in you, you'll know it when Jesus does it. That's right. And so that's what we're talking about. The kingdom will show up. And it shows up with righteousness to get you right with God. Yes. Right with yourself, the way God created you to be. And right with the world. Instead of being a religious, judgmental person, saying, well, I tell you what, look at that dirty sinner. I'm glad I'm not like that, God. Well, you need to go back again and say, God, to get that judgment out of my life. Because you see, when you become righteous with God, you'll be like Jesus, who did not come to the world to condemn the world, but he came that the world might be saved. Somebody told me, I we were working out at the gym the other day, and a man said, I remember you from the Freedom Festival days. Well, I missed the Freedom Festival. He said, I met you at the Freedom Festival. In fact, we have somebody here today that their daughter got baptized at the Freedom Festival, and now the granddaughter is coming to our school, Messiah Montessori School. It's generational. Wow. And he said, oh, I, I miss those days. Of, why, why, why you don't do the Freedom Festival? I said, we did it 19 years. And then the Lord told me we had, it had run its course, now moved to France. Well, what am I going to do? Move to France. Well, why couldn't you do both? Well, it used to take us, but Laurie knows. We plan it nine months. Every week we're planning. I mean, it took a lot of time. And then we didn't charge admission. If I'd have charged it, one, one of our festivals, the newspaper, and we had somebody uh, in, at the, uh, the rise that we used to have, he had some kind of uh, chart where he could look through and count people by hundreds, and they counted 40,000 people that came. The city was just 35,000. God had promised us the city when I first started. God said, you want a big church or you want the city? I said, I want the city. Keep the big church, I want the city. And so we got the city, 35,000 people, 40,000 came. It was the whole city, not counting all the people that were in the backyards of Summerfield and Sugar Hill. And they, they were barbecuing and hearing everything we said because those big banners right there that you see 20 something feet tall, that was our towers of our speakers. You could hear, people told me, you could hear miles away the words going forth, the music, the, the drama, the, 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 the dramatic presentation, the preaching. And we'd baptize, get people saved and baptize them. And I said, so I went to France. Why? I'm on a mission from God, wherever he tells me to go. See, when, when God comes to you and he starts working in you, 
He'll send you where he wants you to go. He'll do with you what he wants. And suddenly as you're doing it, like, oh my God, that's the purpose. I was created for this. Yes, you were created to be where God wants you to be, to do what God wants you to do, so that you can go wherever God wants you to go. It could be across the street to your neighbors. It could be to your family, your community, and wherever your world is. God will reach you in your world. I don't know how big your world's going to be. It could just be you. I mean, there's some people's world is just them. Like, wow, that person got saved? That is unbelievable. Blows my mind. God must be real because look at that person. Wow. Look at that person. He got saved? She got saved? Wow. You see? I remember after I got saved, and I mean, I really was transformed. And we went to a neighbor, it was an engineer and his wife, and the whole neighborhood back in, in Summerfield in those days, all the places in Summerfield where we live, no fences in the backyard. It was, it was pre-fence pre days, before anybody got a chance to put up fences. So everybody was in their backyard, hey, come on over, we knew everybody. And when I'd, I'd come over, they called me Margarita Man. I made the best margaritas. I used to drink margaritas by the pitcher. I'm not going to give you a margarita in the glass. I said, that's your pitcher, that's my pitcher. <laughs> so I remember after I got saved, they said, I, we got your kind of tequila, because I only would drink Jose Cuervo Gold. We got it. Bottles. <laughs> you come into the parties, start making. You're a margarita man. I said, I don't want any, thank you. <laughs> what? Are you sick? No, I got saved. What? My life has changed. I gave my life to Jesus. I can't drink margarita by the quart anymore. I mean, I could if I want to, but I don't want to anymore. I just don't want to. I got, a, I got my thirst quenched with a river of living water that flows from the throne of God. You become more and more like Jesus. God begins to work in your life like you've never been before. So we have some faith declarations. And I, I'm going to give you another scripture in a minute. But we have some faith declarations. Number one, I know him. Let's go to the scripture. Let's go to the scripture. Let me find it. Our faith, John 7, 28 says this. I'm gonna read from the, let me, let me read from the Good News Translation. I usually use New King James, but I'm gonna read from the Good News Translation. I don't know, I don't think I have that scripture up. As Jesus taught in the temple, now he's preaching in the temple, in the, in the temple courts, outside where everybody could hear. And he lifted up his voice. He said in a loud voice, he didn't have a microphone. He said in a loud voice, do you really know me? Can you imagine everybody's like, what? Do you really know me? Now, in the, in the other translations, it says, you both know me and you know where I am from. Why? They knew him, he was Jesus. It, no, it's just Joseph and Mary's son. And yeah, he's from Nazareth. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Can anything good come from the bayous? Yeah, a lot of good stuff can come from Nazareth. And a lot of good stuff can come from the bayous. Wow, of South Louisiana. But he cried out in New King James, you both know me and you know where I'm from. I like the, the twist that the Good News translation says. In a loud voice, do you really know me and know where I'm from? I believe that's the way he said it. Do you really know me? And do you really know where I'm from? Boy, that is a question. I could preach that in many Christian churches. Do you really know Jesus? I'm talking really know him. And do you really know where he is from? And then he said, I have not come in my own authority. He who sent me, however, is truthful, and you do not know him. That's what he said. The one who sent me, you don't know him. He was preaching to the church people that were going to church. Can you imagine? Do you really know me? Oh, yeah, you say, oh, that's, that's Joseph and Mary's son. We know he's always kind of dabbling in, you know, Christian, in, uh, in the Hebrew text. And, He's always standing up and saying something about scripture. Do you really know me? Do you really know Jesus? Do you really know where he's from? I haven't come in my own authority. He who sent me, however, is truthful. And you do not know him. 
729, John 729, the next verse. But I know him. He said, I know the Father. For I am from him. And he sent me. What? Oh, this become my new declaration. Because the scripture says, let me go to this scripture. I'm going to come back to that one in a minute. After the resurrection of Jesus Christ, John 20, 21. So Jesus said to them, his disciples, I just want to let you know I'm a disciple of Jesus. I'm a learner, follower. That's what a disciple is. I'm always learning. I had a man the other day. Uh, he, he, I'm trying to think who, who said this. I'm, I'm trying to connect it, but he told me this. Oh, he's right there. <laughs> Mr. Dale. He said, you will never quit. <laughs> That's what he said. Because you're always striving to be the best. I said, yes, the best version of myself, the one God created me to be. Yes. But he was talking about my education. I have eight degrees working on my ninth. He said, you're going to get your ninth, this is what Dale said. You're going to get your ninth, then you're going to go to the tenth, then you're going to go to the eleventh, I don't know how long. <laughs> you're never going to stop learning. That's what a disciple does. Because if you level off, you haven't fulfilled your faith potential. If you finally say, okay, I'm, that's enough. I'm, that's enough. I, I know enough. No. I want to know everything that God wants me to know. I want to be everything that God wants me to be. I want to do everything that God wants me to do. I want to go everywhere where God wants me to go. Nothing more. We pray this. Every night. Nothing more, nothing less, but nothing else. Nothing else but what God wants. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus says to his disciples, the learner followers, peace be to you. Because sometimes people get caught up in the religion of being like Jesus and they lose their peace. If you've lost your peace, um, you're not swimming in the right river. He says again to them, peace, shalom, he says. Shalom means you're made whole by this kind of peace. It sets you in order. You're in harmony with God, in harmony with your mind, will, and emotions. You are balanced the way God created you to be. Peace be to you. Just as the Father has sent me, I also send you. The Amplified says, then Jesus said that again to them, peace to you as the Father has sent me. I also send you as my representatives, wow. my ambassadors. So when I start thinking about this declaration, wow, I love this. I, I just decided this is my declaration. If I'm being sent the same way Jesus was sent, now I'm his representative, I'm his ambassador. An ambassador that goes to France or any other country is not there of his own accord. He's, he, he has authority to answer to. He represents the nation that sent him. I represent the kingdom of heaven that has sent me. So our faith declaration is, I know him. If that's his declaration, then that's my declaration. If I'm going to be like him, you might not know God, and I'm not here to condemn you, but I want to tell you, I know God. And I remember teaching at, when, when God sent me to France for three and a half straight years, he sent me there. We released our church and we said to everybody, Go find a church. Just go. Go find the one. And we came back after three and a half years. I came back. Deborah was here. And Miss Laurie and Jeff was here. Came back. They still had a handful of people. I said, what are you doing here? Why are you still here? I said, because we've been assigned to you by God. I said, well, thank you. We'll keep going to church. We have a school, but we'll still do church. But listen, Jesus said, I know him. And so when people tell me, I'm an atheist. You're an atheist. Yeah, I love you. I've been sent by God to you. And something starts happening. It's, it's almost like, wow, portals open up and people feel love. Our faith declaration is, I know God. I know Jesus. I know him. And I love this. I am from him. I know him and I'm from him. And in my classes, I remember... Every class. Now, this is kind of like secular country. People say, I thought it was a Catholic nation. Well, they got Catholic churches, but the government seized all the churches. You don't know this probably. In the revolution, they let the Catholics use it, but it all belongs to the government. 
Why? Because they kind of canceled the idea of religion and God in their nation. As a result, almost all the students I met were atheists. Not they were anti-God, they just didn't know anything about him. So when I would teach law, i tell them about Jesus because i tell them my story. Even when I was a lawyer, I'd say, oh, God did this, God did that. And I remember after the first class, I, I, some of you know this story. I, I became, actually I became the director of the program. So now I had some professors under me, international staff working under me. And I wanted to meet a certain professor. And I knew she would, I hadn't met her yet. And I knew what classroom she was on on a Wednesday and I was there waiting. And I see this young lady come. And I said, are you professor so-and-so? No, no, I'm, I'm one of the Islams in your class. This is what she said. I'm one of the Islams. I said, one of the Islams? Yeah, we were sitting in the back there, three of us, three Islams, meaning Muslims, three Islams. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember, because I always let everybody introduce themselves and I introduce myself. And I always get, let them say something, anything they want to know that they want people to know about. I remember you. She said, yes, we, we would like to have coffee with you. Okay, why? Because you talk like you know that you know Jesus. That's what she said. You talk like you know Jesus. I said, yes, I do. We want to know how you did that. We want to know how you know Jesus like that. And they become followers. Listen, they became my followers. One of, the, one of them, uh, her father got murdered when he was going back to, to uh, Pakistan. And, and he got murdered. And she came back, she was so distraught. She says, you are now my father. Can you imagine? And one of the other Islam said, uh, we are so proud to go around everywhere we go. We, we're the students of Professor Jules Bokeh. They don't call me pastor, they call me professor. You see, I know him, I'm from him. And he sent me, what a declaration. I know him, I'm from him, he sent me. I know him, I'm from him, he sent me. I don't know what to say if I start doing what God calls me to do, I'm telling you. As you get close to him and he gets close to you and he starts pulling out the weeds and planting the seeds, oh, I guess I gotta be perfect before I start. No, you start where you are. Along the way, more weeds will get pulled out, more seeds will be planted. All you have to do is say, I know him. I'm from him. He sent me. Everywhere I go, I do this. I didn't, I didn't have this little scripture in me at that point, but I did. <laughs> but I tell everybody, God sent me to you. Oh, I know it must be God because I wasn't even supposed to be here. And I was closed with this story. Deborah and I were in Paris. And we had to go, go return something. I bought something. I wanted to return it because there was something wrong with it. And I would get it to return. We got caught up and a little later and later, and we were supposed to go. And so, okay, we finally finished. It took longer than we thought. And we're walking toward the, the Madeleine, right in the center of Paris. We walk in, walking toward the, 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 it was a big church at one time, the Madeleine, like the Madeleine that followed Jesus. And there we were, on a, we stopped at a stoplight, because you know, we weren't able to cross. It's a place where we first started going to Paris in 1997. We used to stay in that district. And there we were, me and Deborah, we were standing there and a the guy comes, he got a little collar on. If I see a little collar, you know, I look at it and I said, well, he must be a Catholic or an Anglican or something. So I said, God bless you. But as I'm getting ready to say, God bless you, he says, I hear you talking in English. I speak English. I said, actually, I speak American. <laughs> he said, yeah. And he said, uh, I said, I see you have a collar. He said, yeah. Uh, he said, I, 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 I'm a believer. I said, well, that's great. That's great. And uh, he said, where are you from? At first he said, where are you from? He thought we were from New York because of our accent. We don't have an accent. <laughs> I said, no, we're from Homa. Homa? I'm from Homa. I said, actually, right now we live in Gibson. Gibson? I was raised in Gibson. Now, what are the odds? There are no odds. At that moment, somebody from Gibson, it, he said, I wasn't supposed to be here right now, but I, I, I come to, to, to buy my wife a birthday present or an anniversary gift, I forget, a birthday. And Deborah says, give him, give him $50, okay? <laughs> give him 50 euros. He said, what? We're blessing your, your wife. You'd be a part of that blessing. He's connected with us now. And he said, he said, look, I need, I need some mentoring. I need to, I want to start a church in Paris. I'm thinking about over there. I said, know that area. 
And I said, so he said, we need to connect. And so we've been in connection on WhatsApp, but there's going to be more connections. Listen, when you start doing what God wants you to do, when you know him, you come from him and he sent you, you're going to find the right person at the right time, at the right place, and you'll be doing the right thing. You'll be saying the right thing. And suddenly everything comes together. That is Christ-like Christianity. This is what God has planned for you. You might be saying, I'm not even saved. Well, that's the beginning. <laughs> Say, Lord, here I am. I'm an unbeliever. I repent of my unbelief. I repent of my sin. Some, I remember one guy saying, I, I never sinned. Well, sorry to tell you, all have sinned. Happy to tell you. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But Jesus has come to wash away your sin. And all who believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So if you call upon the name of Jesus, he will save you. And so, God, I call upon him right now and I ask you to save me, change me. I don't want to be like I've been living without you. So I renounce Satan and all of his works and whatever it is you do to save somebody like me, I ask you to save me. I will live for you the rest of my life. I believe you, Jesus, to be my savior. I confess you as my Lord. You, I will live for you by your grace because my strength is not enough. I need your grace to live for you for the rest of my life. I believe for the grace of God. And I say I will never be the same in Jesus' name. And you may be a person that is saved. You might just be doing baby steps. Oh, I remember when I was a child, you know, first grader. Deborah and I were in first grade together. We were best friends. Take two baby steps forward. We played the game. We take two baby steps. May I, oh, Simon says, you know, Simon Peter. Simon says you may take one giant step. Oh, take a giant step. <laughs> you know, I'm a little kid. Man, I would jump as far as I, I would leap. Listen, God will get you in the leaping business, even from your start. Yes. From the first day, God will not call little baby steps. He's saying, I'm telling you, I have put a potential of faith in you. I want you to grab a hold to that faith. And it's going to bring you far. And mix that faith with love and righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And I will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Follow him into water baptism. But John the Baptist said, oh, I baptize you in water. But there's one that's coming after me. He's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and and I've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I've been baptized in the fire. I don't know if you can smell the smoke, but I'm pretty hot right now. I'm telling you. And my wife is always saying, you're getting hot, honey. You're really getting hot. So today, my, my hope is really that you catch what I'm sharing. Many people take many notes and are taught a lot. And that's a great thing to keep. I'm a learner. I'm a learner. I will always learn. But it's how much you catch that counts. Oh, I've been taught that and I've been taught that. Yeah, but how much you caught? Because if you catch it, it'll change your life. If you apply it, you'll never be the same. Go beyond your doubts. Go beyond your unbelief. Say that those doubts and that unbelief and that uh, all that stuff does not belong to me. I am a believer. I am an ambassador of Jesus Christ. God dwells in me. I'm a temple of the Holy Ghost and the power of God is alive in my life. Yes. I release that fire, that spirit, that love, that peace, that joy, that righteousness, that kind of faith over every person right now. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I say right now that I feel glad to do this. If you if, if, you want, if you caught something, I want you to just stand and say, God, I caught it. I just want you to stand, take a step of faith and say, God, I'm never going to be the same after this day. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Just go ahead and say it. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. I say the fire is going through this congregation. I say God is burning out the stuff. There's an intense inferno burning out stuff that's been holding you back, holding you down, and keeping you at a limited faith level. I want to say to you that God now 
opens his portal from heaven. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come in every person here. Thy will be done on earth in our lives, just like it's done in heaven. And God, we pray that these words cause us to have a renewed mind. And as we are being transformed by the renewal of our minds, we are going to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God in our lives. And let's pray this. Jesus, Jesus. I, believe. I believe. Now send me on the mission. I choose to accept it. To be like you in this earth as an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And I say I'll never be the same. I say I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Now, I want you to turn to someone and just pray with them right now. And just say, I believe with you. Where two or three gather together. As touching anything, it shall be done by our Father, which is in heaven. Just touch somebody's hand. And just say, I'm in agreement with you. And we believe together. That from this day forward, everything's changed. And even though the circumstances may need some changing, we say you are changing and you will change those circumstances in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. amen. We're going to receive, we're going to receive communion. We're going to receive communion now. But I want to share with all those that are on the internet and around the world, those that might be 100 years from now hearing this, I want you to love one another as Jesus Christ loves you. I love you. God bless you.